Welcome to the SDG LearnCast with me, Pauline Duman. In every episode, I bring you insightful conversations around the subject of sustainable development and learning, helping us all to achieve a sustainable future. Our guest for today is Mr. Patrick Van Wierlt, the Head of Office of the United Nations System Staff College, Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development in Bonn. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Thank you. Patrick, can you introduce yourself and your work at the United Nations System Staff College, um, Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development? Sure. First of all, thank you for inviting me, and it's a great pleasure to be with you in this podcast or LearnCast. My name is Patrick van Wereld and I have the privilege to lead the work of the UNSSC Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development. The Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development is an integral part of the UN System Staff College and our particular role as Knowledge Center located in Bonn, Germany is to respond to the comprehensive learning, training and knowledge needs of UN staff and partners when it comes to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, which concretely means we design and deliver offerings ranging from face-to-face courses to online learning paths and from leadership peer learning to learning academies. At the core of all our efforts is a systems approach to get people to both think and act through the lens of sustainable development. Largely and more practically speaking, we demystify, synthesize essential information and serve as brokers between science and academia and practitioners, be they UN staff, civil servants, or other stakeholders in the non-governmental and or private sectors. So you mentioned about brokering and synthesizing a lot of facts, information, and knowledge out there. And I think a lot of the work of the United Nations System Staff College Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development is really around this concept of knowledge brokering. Can you tell us a bit more about knowledge brokering and unpack this for our listeners? What is knowledge brokering and what is its role in the context of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development? Thank you for that question. It's a good one and it's something that is really at the forefront of uh, many a discussion in our house as well. And I think I just hinted at it already. When we're thinking about knowledge brokers, we're thinking about people or institutions who connect different groups that have separate sets of knowledge but need to work together. In our case, we could be speaking about scientists and policymakers or about the knowledge base shared among scientists, policymakers and the UN, but even about the UN internally. After all, we still see many a discussion inside our organization where different UN programs and funds are using similar words and and concepts but actually mean different things. And what is critical is that one is up to date on the latest trends, policies and news, that one has the ability to translate knowledge into something that everyone understands and has a great capacity for storytelling. As a knowledge broker, you really need to be a decision making and be able to do due diligence to ensure you deliver meaningful content. And in a sense, we are advancing research to the next level by explaining it in understandable language and learning formats. One example in our case, for instance, is the work we have been able to do around the key elements of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and build a course around and link it to the five Ps of sustainable development. One key element there to note is as well that knowledge brokering goes beyond the translation of knowledge alone. Knowledge brokering means that we are actively involved in the debate, and that is important to stress, And I would say, in fact, that is what we believe sets us apart from many others. We not only have experience and expertise in instructional design and learning, but we also have genuine in-house sustainable development and UN programming expertise, which allows us to engage as much as the program policy intersection as it does at the science policy intersection. And the ability to bring all these elements together in understandable formats is truly, I believe, something that will help all of us further the need for transformative change. Can you expand a bit more on the role of the Knowledge Center in this knowledge brokering? What groups 
and individuals do you conduct knowledge brokering for? You have already alluded to the example of the climate change course. Perhaps if you can also provide other examples. That's a really broad question that you're asking me there. And the answer could be equally broad, of course. But looking at current practice, we are particularly active in knowledge brokering for civil servants, whether working with schools of public administration or ministries of health, but also with UN staff. And this one is on the intersection of what I highlighted earlier on the intersection of UN programming processes and transformative change for sustainable development. And as to this, I have to say I'm particularly proud of our a UNCT leadership program in which we have literally taken senior UN leaders into a brown coal mine in Germany and let them interact with government officials, civil society and the mining company to reflect on possible sustainable solutions for the future. It brings together knowledge, applications and reality in a format that is truly inspiring and I believe our participants have really been able to feel and touch the need for that transformative change that we're all talking about and have actually been truly inspired to take that forward in their own settings as well. I would also say in that regard, that's one thing to highlight that on, uh, on this LearnCast, but for the, the, the listeners who would like to learn more about this specific example, I would like to invite them to contact us as we have also designed a very nice VR learning product around it. And I'm sure it can serve as a very interesting learning tool for many people. Thank you so much for that, Patrick. I think a lot of our listeners will be so interested in that immersive learning experience that you mentioned and really having this experience of um, going to a, a mine and being there present, seeing real faces and people who are really affected by um, some of the changes that are happening in their community. You have been working in the area of sustainable development for more than 20 years. And in your years of experience, what were the challenges that you saw in the exchange of knowledge? What I mean by that is, why do you think knowledge and learning is important in achieving sustainable development? And how were you able to overcome those challenges, if you can share some examples? Sure. I think what would be helpful probably is to go back even to the establishment of the Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development because we really used one central question to build the center around it. And the question was, do people know what they need to know? And if so, do they demonstrate the corresponding behavior as a result? It seems a very obvious question, and it certainly is. And the answer to it wasn't really hard to establish either. But it became a great starting point for discovery. And what we noted were a number of recurring key issues when it came to sustainable development learning. Let me try to capture them in five points. First, I think that will come as absolutely no surprise to anyone, we noted and still know today that the narrative of sustainable development isn't consistent when talking to different stakeholders. Second, even if there is a lot of technical knowledge on a particular SDG, relatively little effort is put into genuinely bringing different streams together. On this side, and in this regard, one of the things that we did as a result is we produced the Sustainable Development Rubik's Cube aligned with the five Ps of the 2030 Agenda to explain the interconnections between the SDGs as, and within the larger context of sustainable development as a whole. Another very nice learning tool to explain the complexities of sustainable development to many different audiences. We saw in that regard that the current whole of system offer that we always talk about really needs to be strengthened and be more cohesive and integrated. And that is still a long way to go. Third, knowledge might be available, but it doesn't mean that when people know something, they have the conviction in their hearts to actually act. How do we make people part of the discourse, discovery and solutions? How to develop common purpose? After all, we all know that success will only happen when all stakeholders have an incentive to make it succeed. This element is critical to reflect upon and to build into your learning processes as well. And fourth, coming back to the learning specifically, we had to acknowledge that learning is much more than courses alone. Learning is about the process of acquiring new understanding, knowledge, behavior, skills, values, attitudes, and preferences. 
And for this to happen, learning formats need to be updated all the time and a much bigger use of artificial intelligence will be needed to accommodate this. If everyone is offered the same, it might give room to people to believe they already know the course. This, in turn, influences motivation, and that's why it's critical to step up on what we say so fancy, uh, to step up on agile and adaptive micro-learning. Finally, and related to my third point, life rarely bakes like a cake. And too often, sustainable development and sustainable development learning is approached as if we are baking a cake. We have a goal, a recipe, and ingredients. But for transformative change to happen, we need to be much more flexible and creative and acknowledge that such processes are both technical and political. Sustainable development is inevitably dependent on the making of choices through the political process. And I believe it was Duncan Green in his book on How Change Happens, I think that's the title, who stressed that we really need to learn to dance with the system. And I strongly feel it's that part that learning to dance with the system, the political economy of sustainable development, is often left out or not sufficiently emphasized in sustainable development learning. I really like the analogy that you used with baking and dancing. So I think that's a really good way to put together all of these concepts. And one thing that I take away from that is that sustainable development is not a technical exercise. It's not like I'm looking at a recipe, but it's more complex than just following and ticking um, boxes in that sense. Patrick, we have so many young people listening to this podcast who I'm sure are thinking of becoming researchers, policymakers, leaders, or maybe even knowledge brokers, what you have just mentioned, which is a potential career path for them, something that they can also engage in and do in the future. What message do you have for young people on their role in the building, sharing, and using knowledge? And what can they do about knowledge brokering in their own communities and groups? Thanks, Pauline. That is really an interesting discussion. And I know there are so many young people deeply involved in these processes. And thinking about it and also then thinking about some of the things we have not yet been able to do ourselves and which we should do more of. Let me come back to my original training as a human rights lawyer. And one of the elements as a human rights lawyer, when we're thinking about education, we're talking about a human rights-based approach to education. And we're talking about absolute requirements to have education available, accessible, adaptable, and of quality. I think the quality element, I'll leave that outside for now because that is a, a given that should be focused on. But if you start focusing and reflecting on learning, and again, you start reflecting on learning on sustainable development, we're essentially talking about a public good. And if it's a public good, it is incredibly important to ensure that we make our formats and learning available, accessible and adaptable. And that I would strongly invite everyone, actually young people and all others to start focusing on, because quite often that is a challenge in itself. It is also very strongly linked to this whole process of open educational resources. I think what is needed is a massive boost, massive ability to spread the word, be comfortable in sharing, because through the sharing of experience, through the sharing of learning, we can reach so many more people that still need to be reached. So again, when engaging in research, when engaging in brokering, always keep in mind the availability, accessibility, adaptability, and of course the quality of what we're trying to put on the table, and if possible, make it available to as many people as possible. This is easier said than done. It might sound extremely logical that this is how we should be doing it, but we have basically experienced it ourselves that it is not always as straightforward for different kinds of reasons as one thinks, but we really need to get a boost. We need to get a, a much more energetic community out there which is also talking to again talk to people who are not like yourself that is still a challenge that we're seeing right if you are in one area if you're an economist start talking to the environmentalist if you're an environmentalist start talking to the economist etc etc it's that sharing building and, and knowledge brokering that is required and i would think young people are much more easygoing in those uh, and much more fluent in, 
in making that happen. Uh, and that's what we're seeing, of course. But I think that is absolutely strongly recommended from where I'm sitting. I really like the three things that you mentioned about addressing it as a public good or treating it as a public good and making it open and talking to other people. And this is so relevant also in the situation that we have now with the COVID crisis, with the COVID pandemic, and of course with the vaccination, the research on vaccination and a lot of knowledge around the science behind it. I think this is also very applicable in this context, making it a public, making sure that it is open and shared to everyone, everyone has access, the quality of the knowledge is good, and that it can be adapted to the specific context of the different people. And also um, talking to different stakeholders, actors, friends, communities that are not usually the people that they talk to. I think this is really a powerful message to the young people. Patrick, lastly, I know that you and SSC, Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development, has a lot of courses and materials on sustainable development learning on the UNSDG Learn. Could you give our listeners some guidance on the materials and resources that UNSSC has on sustainable development? Sure. Obviously, we have numerous courses uh, featured on SDG Learn, uh, both fee-based as well as free of charge courses. But I would like to particularly point out our free of charge offerings, as they are certainly in my mind, of course, but I believe also on the basis of the reviews that we have had, certainly worth choosing in that they provide a genuine experience with continuously updated content, peer-to-peer learning included, and notwithstanding sometimes cohorts of more than 500 people, still facilitated processes. So the the way these courses are set up is quite special. And programs in this category are also around topics that are probably of interest to many listeners. One is the Paris Agreement on Climate Change as a Development Agenda, which I already referred. It's a course together developed with the UN Climate Change Secretariat. Another course is on Policy Coherence for Sustainable Development, which we developed with the OECD. The third course is on Anti-Corruption in the context of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, developed together with the the United Nations Development Programme. A very popular course that we also have is on circular economy and a 2030 agenda together with uh, developed in collaboration with UNEP. Uh, Then we have a a fifth one on unleashing the power of the private sector in implementing the 2030 agenda for sustainable development, which has a slightly different take on how we approach it. And towards the last quarter of 2021, we will actually launch two more courses. One is on social protection, which we are designing and developing together with the ILO. And the last one is around communications for the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs, which we are developing together with the UN Office for Global Communications. And all these offerings are free of charge and really interesting to engage with. Over and above that, you can, of course, also find the SDG Primer course. We developed that at a request of partners And last but not least, or better, not we, you, Pauline, are doing quite an amazing job with this particular SDG Learn cast. And that's another uh, contribution to SDG Learn, but also to sustainable development learning at large, because it comes back to that very fundamental element that we have, that we are reiterating now time and again, that learning is much more than courses alone. So... In that sense, this is also a good way of getting back to the very start and to actually say to you, thank you for having these questions around sustainable development, around the Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development and what we're doing. And I can just say to all listeners is that we do a lot on-demand services as well. So I would say, don't be shy, reach out to us. We are always willing to explore how we can bring the message to as many different people as possible. And the more creative you are, the more creative we get. So again, just get in touch and I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you so much, Patrick. It's uh, such a pleasure to have you at the SDG LearningCast. You're very welcome. That was Patrick Van Wierald of the United Nations System Staff College, Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development. So what are the lessons that we learned in our conversation with Patrick on whether knowledge brokering is the missing link between science and changing behaviors for sustainable development and climate action? First, we learned that when we talk about knowledge brokers, 
we refer to people or institutions who connect different groups that have separate sets of knowledge, but need to work together. An important characteristic of a knowledge broker is the ability to translate knowledge into something that everyone understands and has a great capacity for storytelling. But we also learned that knowledge brokering goes beyond the translation of knowledge alone but also involves being actively involved in the debates and discussions. Moreover, knowledge brokers have experience and expertise in designing learning experiences and also expertise on the substantive topics. In the case of the Knowledge Center for Sustainable Development, Patrick highlighted that its role as a knowledge broker in the context of the 2030 Agenda means that staff both have the expertise in sustainable development topics, but also in designing and developing learning, which is more than courses. The ability to translate knowledge into understandable language and formats is crucial in bringing the science, program, and policy expertise together and draw engagement from the different experts. Lastly, we learned that even when knowledge is available and shared, it does not mean behavior change will follow. And this is where the role of the knowledge brokers becomes very important in the learning process among the different actors and stakeholders. They can ensure that learning is achieved through a process of acquiring new understanding, knowledge, behavior, skills, values, attitudes, and preferences which will require constant updating of the approaches, formats, and ways of knowledge brokering. You can find more of the SDG LearnCast on the UN SDG Learn website. For, for now, I'm Pauline Duman. Thanks for listening.